Hey YouTube, guess what? I got something new for you guys. So, uh, as you know, I've been doing pretty much all my videos on this time machine. So, I kind of have everything I can think of at the moment with that. So, I thought that I would move on to a wheel balancing. Kind of like how-tos and things to think about when it comes to um, setting up the machine. How to properly set it up. And uh, that way, you know, to get an accurate balancing job. So, I got here a Snap-on um, wheel balancer. It's um, not motorized. You know, you turn it with a uh, handle. This has actually got um, one of my special adapters on it. So, we'll put that back. This is the wing nut for spinning it and tightening the wheel. So anyway, people think, oh, wheel balancing. All right, so big deal. It's not that hard, you know. I just slap a wheel on there and that's it. Well, there's a couple things to keep in mind when, you, um, when you're setting up for wheel balancing and you're doing it. Um, first is uh, important is picking the right cone. All right, so most machines, you'll get, you know, three, maybe four standard, you know, cones for centering the wheel on, on the, the shaft. Now you do want, most of the machines now have a 40 millimeter shaft. That's what you want. You don't want, I think the old ones were 38 millimeter. Um, pretty much everything now is for 40 millimeter, so, I would stay away from the 38. So, you got the centering cones. Now, you have to pair the right centering cone to the wheel. Now, the way you do that, is I'm gonna set this down here, is, so you got the wheel weight, I mean the uh, centering cone, all right. So we're gonna try this. Now, when, you, when you're when you um, trying to select the right one, you want it to sit maybe halfway on the inside lip right here, okay? So if you place this, it's actually sitting pretty good. As you can see here, Yeah, how much it goes in. So that's just touching it. So this actually is what I would call the right size. Okay, it's about halfway. You want you want the wheel to sit anywhere it's from like around this range right here. Okay, you want it somewhere in that area. Okay, that helps with the centering. If you have it all the way at the end doesn't really it, it can wobble it can move around um, it doesn't it often results in you chasing chasing weights uh, as the term is called where you put on weights after you you know spin it and then you check spin it and then it comes up with more numbers so you got more wheel weights that you put on so you put on those wheel weights and you spin it again and guess what you gotta put more wheel weights on. So a lot of times, the, those issues have to do with using the wrong centering cone, having the surface, the backing plate here, it's, it's got junk on it or something like that, and it's uneven, it's not flat and smooth. Or you got corrosion buildup on the hub, making it uneven so it wobbles a little bit when you spin it so one of the things I like to do especially on these German cars um, this is a Mercedes wheel it's the wheel that pretty much 90% of my videos have been with so I like to clean the inside part where the cone would sit just to give it a better fit so I got here my uh, my little drill, cordless drill, and I have this like, I don't know, it's kind of, it's not a wire wheel, but it's not something that's going to chew into the aluminum. 
but it'll scuff up all the corrosion. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna uh, clean out the bore, uh, the hub bore, and um, we'll, we'll check out the fitment on the cone again. So here we go. Just uh, actually I'll put it to a higher speed. So you can see here, it's nice and clean now. That should give, give um, the centering cone a nice even surface to see down. There you go. There you go. So, we got the right cone size. We cleaned the hub. So we just slide this on. Now, um, one of the things is that uh, when people go to put the wheels on, they, they kind of get on the shaft and they just drop the wheel on the shaft. Uh, bad idea. Okay, these uh, shafts have sensors inside and you can throw off the alignment of the shaft with the sensors. And that can create false readings and actually throw off gradually the accuracy of your balancing jobs. Okay, so you never want to drop the wheel on the shaft. Now this has got a nice little release lever, so you can just slide it on, get it on a little snug. I like to wiggle it back and forth to help it heat. All right, you don't need it that tight. It doesn't have to be so tight that you know you can't get it off again. Um, so here we go. So we got the wheel set up on here. All right. That's pretty good. As you can see, it's kind of going back and forth. So what you want to do is just spin it gently. You want to check to see, is it wobbling like this? Is it going like this? You know, what is it doing? Typically what you're really looking for is going in and out. If it's going in and out, Okay, if it's going like this, okay, that means that there might be an uneven surface and you want to recheck your setup. So if that happens, what I would do is stop the wheel. I loosen this up a bit. I would grab the backing plate and just kind of spin the wheel with holding the shaft still. That will help, in my theory, that will help with recentering the wheel. And then obviously you do another spin. And this is pretty good. Alright. So. This is pretty much the setup, okay? Just, uh, I'm, I'm gonna do this in multiple parts. So this one video just shows you how to set up the wheel. All right, um, now there is another way of doing it, but it mm, doesn't make sense to do it, to be honest. Some people like to put the wheel on and then the cone outside and then put the clamp, uh, the lock wing nut on, and they think that that works better, but I don't think so. Um, 
I don't think it would be better. So, anyway, I hope you like this video, and I will be following up with another quick little video on the function, basic function of a wheel balancer. Thank you and have a great day.